Hey, I'm Allison from Learning at the Primary Pond. I'm a literacy specialist, and in this video, I'm going to explain the difference and define what are voiced and unvoiced sounds, as well as why this is important and can actually help your students' phonemic awareness. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, make sure to hit subscribe and the little bell so that you don't miss any of the videos that I post about teaching literacy in K2. All right, so we've got voice sounds, we've got unvoiced sounds, what are they? Voice sounds are sounds that are produced with the vocal cords engaged. So like, for example, the sound b, right? If you put your hand, which I encourage you to do, um, on your throat or your neck right here, b, you're gonna feel them vibrate. Um, another example is g, right? You feel the vocal cords vibrate. Now, that is in contrast to unvoiced sounds that don't need the vocal cords to be produced. So like the sound for P, P, or the sound for T, T, right? Like your mouth and your throat's still moving, but the vocal cords are not vibrating. So although this was not necessarily something that I learned when I was first teaching or knew for quite a while, it actually is valuable to know this and even to be teaching your kids about this. So whether you're teaching the alphabet to your kindergartners for the first time or just reviewing it in first grade or even working with some second grade like spelling rules and reading rules that we're going to talk about later, it is helpful to help kids understand that for some sounds we engage the vocal cords and for some sounds we don't. So even though it might not be something that you use extensively when you were learning to read, it really can be helpful and it can improve their phonemic awareness. Um, I have a question for you. We later are going to cover some voice and unvoiced pairs so you can have more examples, but I am wondering if you can think of a digraph that has both a voiced and unvoiced sound. If you can think of a digraph that has both types of sounds, go ahead and tell me in the comments and then I'll give you the answer at the end of this video. All right, so back to why we should teach this. Phonemic awareness, some kids struggle with it, um, especially English, English language learners or maybe students with like articulation difficulties. And so when we can say, when we can actually have them put their hands and feel their vocal cords vibrating, that can help them differentiate between similar words. Like for example, the words pill and bill, the p and b are produced pretty much exactly the same way with our lips and our tongue but whether the vocal, our vocal cords are turned off or on is different. So with p, p, they're not turned on. And with b, b, they are turned on, right? So that can help students who are English language learners or who are just struggling with phonemic awareness for whatever reason. So that can be a good thing to mention and actually have them feel their vocal cords, whether they're vibrating or not. Um, there are also, as I mentioned earlier, some reading rules that have to do with voice and unvoiced sounds. So Let's think about the letter S as an inflectional ending at the end of a word. When you have a plural like hats, the S makes this sound and it's an unvoiced sound, S, right? However, when you have the word bugs, bugs, you feel the vocal cord vibrating at the end. It's making like a Z sound. So S can make a voiced or unvoiced sound and kids need to have opportunities discovering, oh, in this word, does it, you know, have a voiced sound or does it have an unvoiced sound? So this really helps um, them understand the different sounds of S and just remember it a little bit better. It can help them read words that have the S at the end because if they know, oh, well, I'm just gonna produce the sound the same and try it, vocal cords engaged or not, s, z, then maybe that can help them figure out the word. So that's very relevant to this rule. Okay, next up we have the rule of ED, right? So ED is an inflectional ending can make different sounds in jumped, jumped here, that's the vocal cords are not on. Spilled, d, the vocal cords are on. Rested, it says id, right? Rested, right? So there's differences in whether the ed ending produces a voiced or unvoiced sound. And there's actually three different sounds that it can make. So you can talk about voiced and unvoiced sounds in this context as well. Okay, so let's talk about some different activities for having kids practice. This is not something that I spend like days and days teaching. I just kind of like mention it and integrate it. You know, if I'm teaching kindergarten, I'm introducing the letters. As I introduce a letter, I might have them say the sound and then just put it on their vocal cords. Is it thumbs up? Is the letter voiced or is it thumbs down unvoiced? Do they feel their vocal cords on? So it takes like two seconds. If you're reviewing the alphabet in first grade, you could do the same thing. It doesn't take very long to just have them notice, right? 
Um, of course, we integrate it when we're talking about spelling and reading rules like that. And then another thing that you can have them do is literally just give them the entire alphabet on little tiny pieces of paper and have them sort. Is a sound voiced or is it unvoiced? Again, you don't need to spend a ton of time teaching this, um, but it is helpful information for the kiddos, especially if they struggle with phonemic awareness or have some sort of articulation or, you know, like they're learning English as a second language. Okay, so last but not least, let's talk about voiced and unvoiced pairs. We actually talked about the B and the P already, how our mouth produces them the same way, B, P. But the difference is that the vocal cords are turned on here and they're turned off here. Same thing with D and T. Produced essentially the same way, just the difference in vocal cords, G and K. If you've never known this before, it's kind of crazy, right? You're like, oh yeah, they are produced the same way. The only difference is the vocal cords. Same thing with j and ch, v and f, z and s, like we talked about with that little rule already. And then the last thing I wanted to mention, this is the question that I asked you earlier. So I mentioned that there was a digraph that has both a voiced and an unvoiced sound. And that digraph is th right? It has both. So if you think about the word bath, that is the unvoiced sound. So bath, bath, they're not vibrating, right? But if you think about the word them, them, you feel that the th um, in that word has the vocal cords vibrating. So again, I like to introduce this concept when we're just introducing the letters for the first time but it's also even more helpful when you're working with kids on the TH because, you know, they have to try both pronunciations sometimes in a word to figure out if it's the unvoiced or the voiced. And that's just a handy thing for them to know. I hope this was helpful to you. If you'd like to dive even more in depth on teaching phonics in kindergarten, first or second grade, I have a full length in-depth in professional development session or webinar, totally free. There's a certificate for professional development credits that you get. And then there is also um, a free download that you get. There is gonna be a link that goes with this video so you can sign up for that free workshop. Hope to see you there. Thanks so much for watching. Hit the like button, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.